Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Zhong. Today we are going to remake the procedural building in Blender 3D 3.0 using geometry nodes fill workflow. So the workflow in Blender 3.0 is still very similar with the Blender 2.93 and the only difference is the point separate section. But to avoid the confusion in the geometry node, I'm going to start everything from scratch again. Okay, before we dive into Blender, let me go through what we are going to do in this tutorial. First, we are going to clone the windows on a grid. Then, we are going to replace the top row of the windows with the roof and the bottom row of the windows replaced with the ground floor window and door. And then, the right column here replaced with the pillar. Then, after we complete one side of wall, we can start to duplicate the wall into four and put it together. After putting it together, we can start to link it so that when we change the width, height and length, it will move together. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, here I have already prepared the 3D asset. We have two windows, then we have door and windows for ground floor. Then we have a pillar, a roof and a roof corner. This asset are taken from the previous tutorial. It's just some basic modeling, so I'm not going to repeat it again in this video. You can download the asset file from the link at the description below. But in case you want to create this asset yourself, just one important thing that we need to aware. In order to make us easy to do the calculation in the geometry node, we need to remain the size of every 3D element in 1 meter by 1 meter, x axis 1 meter and z axis 1 meter, and then the y axis is flexible. And for the pillar, we need to remain it 1 meter for z axis, then for the roof, 1 meter for x axis, and the z axis is flexible. Then after you complete the modeling, Remember to press Ctrl A and apply the scale for each of the 3D element. After apply the scale, make sure the scale for XYZ axis in transform panel is 1. After finish the modeling, remember to move the origin of all 3D element to the bottom left back corner. Okay now, before we go to geometry node, let's select two of these window and add them into a collection. Let's name it windows. Then select two of these elements, add them into collection as well. Let's name it ground floor. Okay, now select all of them and move them beside. Split the screen, go to geometry node editor. Okay, then select the collection, press shift A and add a cube. Then let's name it procedural building. In the geometry node editor, click new and then add a grid. Connect it to group output, then add a transform node. Rotate the X axis 90 degree, then add instant on point node. Drag the windows collection into the geometry node editor. Connect the geometry to the instant. Then remember to take separate children, reset children, and pick instance. And now you can see our windows is overlapping together. The reason is because if we refer to our grid, our instant object is actually grown on every vertices on the grid. And now, the default grid size is 1 meter by 1 meter. And if you remember, our windows is all 1 meter by 1 meter. That means now we are having 2 meter of wall squeezing in 1 meter of grid. So in order to fix this issue, we need to increase our grid size to 2 meter by 2 meter. And now it's stick together. That means every time when we change the amount of vertices, the grid size have to be one point smaller than the vertices. Let's say now we change the vertices x to 6, then we have to change the size x to 5 as well, then only it will stick together. But this is really inconvenient if we need to change both of the value manually every time. So in order to make it easy, we can connect the vertices x to the group input, then go to the group tab, select the vertices x and rename it with, and now add a math node. Connect the width from group input to the math node. And then change the function to subtract. Then we need to minus 1 and connect the value to size x. That means now we are sending our vertices x value to the group input. And we can now adjust the value in the modifier properties. And when we change the value in modifier properties, the value will send to this math node. And the math node will minus 1 point and send the value to size x. So no matter what numbers you put for the width, the numbers will always minus 1 and send to the size x. And now we want to do the same step for vertices y. Connect the vertices y 
to the group input, go to the group tab and select the vertices Y, then rename it height. Then duplicate the math node, connect the height from group input to the math node, then connect the value to the size Y. And now, when we change the width and height in the modifier properties, you can see the wall is stick together now. Then next, I want to randomize the arrangement of the windows. Let's add a random value. Change this to integer, connect it to the instant index. Then we can play with the seed number to randomize it. Okay, then let's select all this node. Press Ctrl J to frame it. Press F2 and name it points. Okay, next, we need to replace the top row of windows with our roof. So in order to do that, we need to add a separate geometry node. Let's move this beside. Add a separate geometry node. Put it after the transform node. So the function of the separate geometry node is allow us to separate the point on this grid into two groups and then we are able to assign two different instant objects to the grid. As you can see, the node actually got two outputs. For the selection output here, we have our windows connect to it already. And here we have invert output so we can actually connect it to another instant object. But even though here we got only two outputs, if we need to separate more points, we can still adding more separate geometry node to the node tree. And beside this, the node is also allow us to separate the edge, face, and spine as well. But in this case, we are going to separate points. Okay, now let's duplicate the instant on point node. Then drag the roof into the geometry node editor. Connect the geometry to the instant. Connect the invert to the points. Then add a joint geometry before the group output. Then we can connect both of the instant object together. Okay, now we need to select which row of windows need to be replaced by roof. So to do it, go to the separate geometry node, add a position node, and connect it to the selection. Then add a separate XYG to separate the position. So we only want to take the position of G axis. Okay, then add a math node. Change the function to less than. Let's untick the peak instant. So now we have replaced the roof on the top row and now the threshold value is 0.5. If we try to increase the building height to 4, the roof is duplicate to 2. So in order to fix it, we need to increase the threshold value to 1. And if we increase the height to 5 again, we have to increase the threshold value to 1.5 as well. So every time when we increase the height in the modifier properties, we need to add or minus 0.5 for the threshold value as well. And the reason why we need to add or minus 0.5 is because our grid size is 1 meter by 1 meter. So when we increase the height, that means we are also increase one grid from the center. So when we increase one grid, 0.5 meter will expand towards positive G axis and another 0.5 meter will expand towards negative G axis. Same apply for other axis. So this is why every time when we increase the value of height, we need to add 0.5 to the threshold value in order to maintain the selection of the top row. So let's add a group input. Connect the height to the math node, then duplicate the math node, change the function to divide and divide 2. So we are taking the height to divide 2. So every time when we increase or decrease the height in modifier properties, the numbers that go to threshold will be increased 0.5 or decreased 0.5. So in order to make the roof appear on top, currently the height is 5. So we need to get 1.5 for the threshold value here. So now 5 divide 2 is 2.5 so we still need to minus 1 in order to get the roof on top okay now we can start to adjust the height again and we can see the roof is remain 1 and keep sticking on top okay then let's select all these node press ctrl j to frame it press f2 and name it roof selection then we have done the roof and next we want to do the exactly same step for the ground floor okay now Let's move this beside so we have more space. Duplicate the separate geometry node and put it after the selection output. We want to separate the point again, then only we are able to add another instant object to the grid. Let's move this higher so we won't confuse later. Okay, now we want to add the ground floor element to the invert output here. 
So let's duplicate the instance on point node, connect the invert output to the point, then drag the ground floor correction to the geometry node editor. Remember to take separate children and reset children, then connect it to the instance, connect it to the joint geometry. Okay, now we need to select which row of the windows need to be replaced by ground floor element. It's exactly same like what we did for the roof just now. So all we need to do is duplicate all this node, press alternate P to unframe it, then connect the less than to the selection. Then currently the math node here is still selecting the position of the roof because the node we copied just now is used to select the roof. So now the roof is positioned at the positive G axis and the ground floor should be at negative G axis. So in order to reflect it to the opposite axis, duplicate the math node. Then we need to multiply minus 1 to reflect it. Then change the less than to greater than. Then adjust this value until the ground floor appear. And now let's play with the height. And now you can see the ground floor is stick perfectly at the bottom. Okay, then select all these nodes, press Ctrl J to frame it, press F2 and name it ground floor selection. Then next, we want to include the pillar into the grid. Okay, now let's move all these nodes higher. Again, we need to separate the point, duplicate the separate geometry node and put it after the selection output. Okay, now we need to replace this column of wall with the pillar. So let's duplicate all this map node again. Press alternate P to unframe it. Connect the less than to the separate geometry. So now we need to select the point on X axis. So let's disconnect the G axis position and connect X axis to the map node. Disconnect the height as well and connect the width to the map node. Then go to the separate geometry node, add instant on point node, drag the pillar to the geometry node editor, connect the geometry to the instance, connect the invert to the point, then connect the instant on point to the joint geometry. Then let's try to adjust the width. Okay, then we've done the pillar. So again, select all these nodes, press Ctrl J to frame it, press F2 and name it pillar selection. Okay, next we need to replace the roof in the top right corner here with the roof corner. So go to the roof selection section here. Duplicate this separate geometry node. Move it lower. Duplicate the instant on point node. Drag the roof corner to the geometry node editor. Connect the geometry to the instance. Connect the invert output from separate geometry to the point. Then connect the instant on point to the joint geometry. Then again, go to the separate geometry node. We need to select the roof at the corner here. So let's duplicate all this node. Press alternate P to unframe it. Connect the less than to the selection. Then the point we want to select is on the X axis. Disconnect the G axis. Connect the X axis to the less than. Then disconnect the height as well. And connect the width to divide too. Okay, now let's try to increase the width and height to check if everything is okay. Everything looks good for me. Okay, then select all these nodes, press Ctrl J to frame it, press F2 and name it Roof Corner Selection. Okay, now I think we can label all these nodes as well, so we won't confuse it later. Let's start from the top here, select it, frame it, press F2 and name this ground floor. Frame it and name this pillar. Frame this as well, press F2, name this windows. And this one, roof. Roof corner. So now we have done the first wall. Next, we are going to duplicate another three wall and link it together. So in order to duplicate the wall, let's go to the group output, duplicate the joint geometry, then add a transform node. 
Then select the transform node, press Ctrl Shift D to duplicate it, then connect it to the joint geometry. And now we have duplicated the wall, but currently they are overlapping together. So go to the transform node below, then adjust the y axis to split it. So now the first transform node here is actually controlling the first wall we created just now, and the second transform node here is controlling the second wall we just duplicate. And now we turn the second wall 180 degree. Okay, then we want to duplicate another two wall. Select everything from the group input to the joint geometry and then duplicate it. Move the group output to the center. Then duplicate the joint geometry and put it before the group output. Then connect this joint geometry to the joint geometry before the group output. That means now we are joining four sides of wall together. Then go to transform node we duplicate just now in the rotation column, tap 90 degree. Then we do the same thing for another side of wall, rotate it minus 90 degree. And now we can start to adjust four of these transform node to put four sides of wall together. And now we have done putting it together and previously we already set up the properties for width and height. Now we need to add another properties for length. So go to the group input at the very beginning of the node tree. Disconnect everything that connect to width. Connect the vertices X to the group input. Then connect the vertices X from group input to the math node. Then connect it to the size X. Then go to the group tab, select the vertices X and change the name to length and now go to the group input for roof corner selection disconnect the width and connect the length to the divide tool then go to the pillar selection disconnect the width as well and connect the length to the divide tool and now in the modifier properties try to play around with the value of width and length and now you can see when we adjust the width and length the another side of wall is not moving together so for example, if you try to adjust the width, the wall that facing at the x-axis supposed need to be moved and sticking together at the edge of the another wall. So in order to fix this issue, go to the transform node for the wall that facing at x-axis. This one. Okay, before we continue, let me adjust the width and length to stick it together so we won't get confused later. And then now, we need to make it when we adjust the value of width at the same time, we want this wall to auto-adjust the x-axis position as well. So that when we adjust the width, this wall will always stick together with the wall beside. Okay, now press Shift A and add a combine XYZ. And then we need to copy all the value in the translation section here to the combine XYZ. Then connect it. Add the group input. Connect the width to x-axis in combine xyz and now the wall is go to the opposite direction. So to reflect it, we need to add a math node. Then we need to multiply minus 1. Then duplicate the math node, change the function to add, then adjust the number until the wall stick together. And then we try to adjust the width again. So now we can see the more we increase the width, the further the wall move away. This is because the grid size is 1 meter. Every time when you add one grid, 0.5 meter will expand towards positive x axis and another 0.5 meter will expand towards negative x axis. Same apply for other axis as well. So that means whenever we add one grid in the modifier properties, we only need to add 0.5 meter to this side of the wall. So that means we need to take the numbers of width to divide 2 because no matter we increase or decrease the number of width, the numbers will automatically increase or decrease 0.5. Then only we add or minus the numbers 
to get the result we want. Okay, now try to adjust the width again. Okay, it's stick together now. And next, we want to do the exactly same step to the other three sides of wall. So go to the transform node above this one. Select all this node, press Ctrl Shift D to duplicate it. Then press Ctrl X to delete the multiply. Connect the combine XYZ to the transform node. Then adjust this value until the walls stick together. Let's try to adjust the width again. Okay, now both of the wall is sticking together. Let's select all this node, press Ctrl J to frame it, press F2, name it width. Okay, now we need to do the same step for the length as well. Let's select and duplicate all this node. Press alternate P to unframe it, bring it to the transform node for length, this one. Then go to the group input, disconnect everything, then connect the length to both of the math node. Then go to the combine XYZ, reconnect the math node to Y axis, this one as well. Because the length is in Y axis direction, change both of the X axis here to 0. Then connect them to the transform node. Then adjust both of these map nodes until the walls stick together. Then try to adjust the length. And we can see now everything is linked together. Again, let's select all these nodes. Frame it, press F2 and name it length. And next, we want to add a roof to the building. So go to the group output. Duplicate the joint geometry. Add a grid. Connect it to the joint geometry. The grid is here. Add a transform node. Move it higher so that we are easy to see. And now I want to make it when I adjust the width and length of the building. I want the size of the grid to follow the width and length of the building so that it will cover properly on top of the building. So to do it, add a group input. Connect the width to the vertices X and connect the length to the vertices Y. Then add a math node. Change the function to subtract, then subtract 1, duplicate it. Then connect it. Then move the roof to the correct position. And now, if you try to play with the width and length, you will notice the roof is now covered properly on top of the building. But if you try to adjust the height, you will notice the height is not linked with the roof yet. So in order to link it, add a combine XYZ. Copy all the translation value from the transform node to the combine XYZ. And then connect the height from the group input to the G axis in combine XYZ. Then duplicate this map node, put it before the combine XYZ. Change the function to divide and divide to. Duplicate the map node again. Change the function to add. And we can adjust the value until we get the height we want. And you can see now the roof is stick properly on the top. Again, let's select all this node, press Ctrl J to frame it, press F2 and name it roof. Okay, now not sure if you notice, every time when we increase the height of the building, the building is expanded from the center towards the positive and negative G axis. But this is not what we want. We only want the building to expand towards the positive G axis and not to the negative G axis. So to solve this issue, let's go to the group output, add a transform node. Go to the roof section here. Then select this node. Duplicate it. Press alternate P to unframe it. Put 0 for the y axis in combine xyz, then connect it to the translation. Then adjust this value until the building touch the floor. 
Okay, now the origin point is here. I want to move our building to the center of origin point. So to do it, let's duplicate the transform node. Then adjust the Y axis to minus 3. Okay, now try to adjust the width, height and length. Everything looks good. And now we done it. So if you like my video, please subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye.